Hello dandelions. I've been having some thoughts recently about spiritual mentors and basically just reassessing and exploring how I feel about the idea of having a spiritual mentor and whether or not that would at some point or another help me to progress on my spiritual path and whether it's an experience that would essentially enrich me or not. And I think I'm a very specific kind of person and in many ways I'm kind of an awkward person and I've spoken before in the Me, Myself and I vlog that I did about my keenness on autonomy and on doing things very much in my own way and I sometimes wonder if maybe that might be a barrier or a setback for me in terms of having a spiritual mentor and when I talk about a spiritual mentor I'm not talking about like a person whose YouTube videos you might watch and get a lot of inspiration from um, and be inspired by and motivated by and I'm not talking about you know those authors that um, kind of fulfill that role in a sense like for example Deepak Chopra is a good one uh, or spiritual figures in general like the Dalai Lama I'm not talking about that kind of mentor that kind of distant um, mentoring which is based on admiration and kind of following their work and such I'm talking about a mentor who is in on it with you somebody that you go to who has a personal knowledge of your path and who is trying to help you who's dedicated to enriching your spiritual path and helping you to progress on it so basically you have a personal connection and whether or not this is something that happens within the confines of a coven with the high priestess for example or something like that or if it's somebody that you pay to help you to explore your spiritual um, abilities and to develop on your spiritual path, whatever it is. I'm talking about that personal mentor. And basically just been doing some thinking because since I've come onto the YouTube community, I have seen a lot of pagans talking about the relationships that they have with their mentors or the times in the past where they've had a spiritual teacher, a one-on-one -on -one spiritual teacher and how much it's enriched their lives and what it taught them and how they were able to progress forward beyond that and how they used it as kind of a springboard for everything that came afterwards. And it's really inspiring to me because it's not the kind of idea that I ever would have come to organically or on my own. For me, it's kind of something that would take place more in the Abrahamic religions. I never really considered it to be outside of the coven environment, obviously, something that would be done. Um, but of course it makes a great deal of sense and it is actually a really great idea, particularly if you're experiencing spiritual despair or a spiritual slump or you're lost in the mist of your spiritual ideas, they're kind of swirling around, you've got no way to pin them down or identify them or work with them. And another reason I think it might be a great idea for some to have a spiritual mentor is if they are changing very much from one religion or spiritual path to another. So maybe if they're breaking with Christianity after having been Christian for the whole of their childhood and adolescence and now suddenly they find themselves on this pagan path and it's it's something that they have to really let go of. It's something that they have to embrace the new path and it might be very difficult to do that alone. You might need somebody to kind of cut through the thicket for you. And I think that's why a lot of people choose to have a mentor. So I wrote some notes tonight um, about the thoughts I've been having, just basically trying to fathom out what would make me seek a spiritual mentor and what the benefits would be and also what the, uh, what the downsides would be or what the disadvantages might be to me seeking a spiritual mentor. And as I said, I'm very much open to the idea now, mainly because of the experiences I've had with listening to people on YouTube and the obvious admiration that a lot of people on YouTube feel towards these people that are spiritual guides and spiritual mentors and want to empower others on their spiritual path. And I think it's a really great thing. I think it's a great thing that um, having a spiritual mentor is held in such high regard. I'm just not sure if it's right for me. So... Um, this may or may not interest you because it's obviously it's a really personal thing but my channel is really personal in a lot of ways anyway so I'm just going to carry on. Okay so why would I look for a mentor? That was kind of the first list that I made. Um, the first thing I wrote was to further my understanding of my own nature. Now the idea that I have of what a mentor is and what mentoring entails in a spiritual context is that you're not actually there to transmit knowledge to the person you're mentoring per se, you are there to help to cleanse and open the channels through which the transmission of your student's own spiritual knowledge will, you know, be able to go with greater clarity. That was a bad sentence, I'm really tired. So what I mean is, 
the mentor shouldn't actually be trying to impart any knowledge. What they should be trying to do is to kind of clear and filter the pathways um, for the student's own knowledge to have a chance to take shape and to get planted and to grow properly. So I think it's more about helping the student work out what they want, how to motivate them for what they want and how to make it manifest in a way that's going to be useful and that's going to bring success on every level that the student wants it to. It's not actually about imparting massive reams of knowledge. So for example, there are many, many spiritual mentors on the internet who literally have a disclaimer underneath their profile or whatever it is saying, you do not need to be on any particular pathway to have spiritual mentoring from me. You can literally be anything from a Christian to a Muslim. You can be a Satanist, whatever the hell it is, whether you're kind of a mishmash, whether you're converting from one to the other, whether you don't know, you can have spiritual mentor mentoring from me. And I think that is because it's actually the techniques of spiritual mentoring that matter much more than the transmission of any set texts or set ideas or set information. It's not about that. It's about understanding how spirituality can flourish in anybody's life with the correct tools and with the correct encouragement. So I do think that if I had a spiritual mentor, they would help me to further my understanding of my own nature. And I like that idea because in many ways I'm quite a conflicted person. And I do have many different sides to me and many different feelings grappling for position sometimes and different mindsets and standpoints grappling for position. I'm not really all that sure of my own self-image, let alone my own spiritual intent at times. I'm getting more confident and more comfortable, but I'm still in that very in-between place where a lot of the dichotomies that I have in my own personality do permeate into the spiritual sphere of my life as well. And that interests me. And that's something I'd like to explore. And if you're trying to explore your own labyrinthine tangled inner terrain, it might be quite useful to have a guide with a torch, you know, and that's kind of what I think a spiritual mentor may come to be for me. Um... As a spiritual experience in itself is the next thing on my list. And I do think that even if you're not going through a difficult time or a time of spiritual despair or whatever, it might be quite interesting for a year or so to experiment with having a mentor as a kind of a spiritual challenge and as a new spiritual pathway to appreciate what it's like to have some kind of guide, um, some kind of teacher for empowerment and motivation when you've never had one before and you've always kind of done your own thing, that is a spiritual challenge in itself. You have to break boundaries down. You have to let go of your barriers and your preconceived notions. You have to let somebody else in. You have to take a certain amount of constructive criticism, perhaps, or advice that you may in the past have turned your nose up at. So I think it's a spiritual challenge and I think it's a new way of seeing how to progress forward on the spiritual pathway. So that interests me quite a lot. Um, for difficulty with a particular pursuit or if you're in a spiritual slump or spiritual despair. So if, say for example if I was to begin very deeply and very intensely the study of astral projection which I've flirted with and dabbled with and am now going back to in a serious way and I am into psychedelic spirituality which I'm not quite sure whether or not I want to tap you into on the channel but um, you know, I have kind of dipped my toe in. But say if I was to want to seriously and intensely study it, I may um, want to involve a spiritual mentor in maybe just that one pursuit because it is particularly difficult, particularly intense, particularly overwhelming, or I'm not sure, or, you know, I'm conflicted, or I've hit a wall with it and I can't go any further, that kind of thing. So it's not necessarily about your overall path, but it's about being able to integrate that one area of study into the path without too much disruption and being able to feel as well that your ego is intact and your spiritual consciousness is intact and you're not beating yourself up for like basically not being completely adept at astral projection overnight kind of thing. And obviously spiritual despair and spiritual slumps. <clears throat> I've been through spiritual slumps once or twice but spiritual despair I would say is a little bit strong. I don't think I've ever had a sense of spiritual despair in my life aside from perhaps a touch when I was at the real arse end of my nihilism which was uh, at the end of last year which is something that I will go into. Um, I think it was basically you know when you're a nihilist you're completely at one with that po point of view. When you're coming out of it and you're realising you want something and you want to love life and you want to believe again um, nihilism can feel like a really cold bog that you've only got one foot out of but you can't quite pull the other one out of so that almost became 
what I would consider to be a spiritual despair, but not really. I've never woken up in the middle of the night panicking that God doesn't exist or anything like that, or, you know, wondered whether or not I'm a spiritual being. I've known I was a spiritual being since I was knee high to a grasshopper and I'm sure I always will be. Um, so I've never really experienced full on spiritual despair, but that might be a reason that people would go to a spiritual mentor, obviously. Um, for humility and to reject complacency, I've written here. So I think it might be quite easy when you are a long way into a spiritual journey and you've basically been doing this for a lot of years to kind of convince yourself that you don't need to be taught anything, you don't need any instruction, you don't need a fresh way of looking at things. And I think maybe having a spiritual mentor could encourage humility if you've become complacent or if you've become too sure of yourself and too sure that you're definitely on the right path and you don't need anyone to kind of challenge you on that. So I think that might be uh, an idea why I would or why some people would. Um, and I also wrote something, what did I write? I help others. Okay, so uh, this seems a little bit convoluted, but basically in psychoanalysis, if you are a professional psychoanalyst, you are encouraged in turn to have your own psychoanalyst. And the way this works is that basically the idea is you cannot perform a psychoanalysis on somebody unless you know what it's like to have psychoanalysis on yourself. And also the idea is about not dropping anchor. So the idea is that you are always a work in progress as well. And that if you get too complacent and comfortable with being the guide and helping other people, the patients, then you become too comfortable with your own ability and you don't challenge yourself and you don't change anything or work through anything yourself. So, for example, my mother had a psychoanalyst, uh, psychotherapist slash kind of heart, six of one, half a dozen of the other for a long time after her mother died. Um, and she she told me that her psychoanalyst had in turn her own psychoanalyst and that it went on and on like this. So I thought that was really interesting. And I think because I am a tarot reader and because I assume that position of helping others, comforting others, etc., that I think maybe having a spiritual mentor seems like an idea in that kind of vein, um, that psychoanalytic vein, where it seems kind of troublesome for a helper to not in turn have their own helper. How can you deal with somebody, uh, help someone deal with their shit if you don't deal with your own shit and if you're convinced that you don't have any of your own shit? So I think that's kind of um, a bit of a thing that interests me quite a lot, that idea that um, if one assumes to help others, then one needs to constantly remember what it's like to get help themselves. And the counselling courses that I have under my belt, and particularly my interest in bereavement counselling and in um, things like complicated grief, uh, stuff like that, I think that that has obviously helped me in a lot of ways to channel my empathy in a professional way. And also I was in healthcare for a long time. I was in kind of like frontline healthcare. So talking to people who may need an ambulance sent to their home. Um, I've heard every kind of thing that can go wrong and will go wrong. I've, I've heard and I've had to um, to react to that in a very professional, serious, straightforward and quick manner. So these things have helped me and stood me in good stead. But I still think that whole idea of having a mentor because you in turn are being somebody's mentor in a sense, seems like a really good healthy pursuit, a healthy thing to do. So the reasons that I would maybe choose not to find a spiritual mentor. Um, I'm very autonomous, strong boundaries is what I wrote. Well, that's true. <laughs> As I said in the Me, Myself and I video, I'm very keen on autonomy in my own spiritual path and I wouldn't wish to compromise and I wouldn't wish to take any time away from me doing what I want to do in order to facilitate somebody else's idea for me or somebody else's plan for me or somebody else's suggestion that I change things up in any way that I don't think is going to suit me. So I suppose it's recalcitrance in a sense, but if you can't have autonomy over your own spiritual journey, which is the journey of the cosmic pathway of life, you know, um, then how, what the hell can you have autonomy over? I mean, Christ, it, uh, it would just be ridiculous for me to kind of um, pass the oar to somebody else and let them decide where we're going. So I know that that's not the job of a spiritual mentor, but sometimes I think my defences or my boundaries may have a tendency to wreck things and maybe my realization of that and my acceptance of that would mean that it wouldn't actually be so bad because I can check myself before I wreck myself and I know what my downfalls are in that respect I know what my flaws are you know um 
but yeah, there would maybe be a danger that I would feel that my autonomy was being taken away from me in one respect or another, or that I would want to direct the journey too much, and I wouldn't allow my spiritual mentor to direct the journey enough, you know, it would kind of be a bit pointless. Um, I would have difficulty choosing a mentor. This is a big thing. Um, I've read online some articles about how to choose a spiritual mentor, and a lot of them do suggest that popularity would be a strong reason to choose a mentor. So obviously if there's a mentor out there that has a lot of testimonials and has a lot of good press and has a media kit on their website and obviously has kind of done this for a while, then that might be a good reason to choose them over somebody perhaps who's only just coming into the profession and only just getting the word out there about themselves. And I think in a lot of ways that's true, but I also think going back to what I was saying about how I am a lot of different personalities rolled into one, and I'm not saying that's just me, that's everyone, but I really acknowledge it and I really kind of embrace it, but it's quite confusing and sometimes I feel quite conflicted about my own spiritual journey and where it's leading and what it means to me to be a spiritual being. Um, so yeah, you know, that can be difficult, I think. Um, I would have difficulty choosing a mentor that would speak to me on every level of my spiritual interest and my spiritual understanding. There might have to be one that's kind of like a light worker and really into the law of attraction and positive energy. There might have to be another one that's more into the dark energies and bonding with the um, with the darker self, or there might have to be one for something and one for something else. I don't know, like I think that it, I would find it difficult to find one person that would mirror spectacularly every facet of the spiritual journey I want to be on, I suppose. So maybe that's overthinking, but I, you know, I do overthink. That is a major flaw of mine. Um, I would need to be clear about the relationship. Okay, so I always wonder, because I know that having a spiritual mentor must be a really personal thing and it works differently for different people. But is the relationship you have with your spiritual mentor supposed to be in any sense therapeutic in the way that you would have kind of like a patient and client bond? Is it supposed to be at all maternal or paternal, parental, if you like? Is it supposed to be a bit of a tough love thing? I mean, are you supposed to direct it or does the spiritual mentor themselves normally have a style that they stick to? How do you react when boundaries are pushed too much? How do you react when you feel challenged? this kind of thing. So I think I'd have to be pretty clear about the the state of the relationship and the character of the relationship. And I'm not sure how certain you can actually be about that until you get the ball rolling and you've paid the money and you're on this course with this spiritual mentor and then suddenly you feel like, I don't like this, this is too, um, you know, parent and child. I don't feel I'm a bit, or, you know, whatever it is, I don't know. Maybe you might try, you might bond too much to your mentor and that might be an issue or, I don't know, I mean, I've had certain issues in the past with queerance and, you know, I've had to be bold and I've had to say, you know, this is the extent of our relationship. Um, you know, it can't go into boundaries any further than this or whatever. And I think that is a danger when you find somebody that's helping you, but I'm completely rambling now. Uh, money, money made the list. There are a great many spiritual mentors out there and they all look good, but they all look pretty pricey. And I can appreciate, because I'm writing a course at the moment, it's my first course that I've ever written about tarot. And it's basically a course about bonding with the deck and it involves lots of ideas and exercises and focus areas for feeling more bonded to your deck and more at one with the whole notion of tarot in general, allowing you to feel like you've really gotten to know your cards and you can really progress forward from there. So it's a bit of a springboard course. And I know that when it's all done and dusted, and it is a 10 week course, at some point or another, I may choose to actually um, offer this course on my Etsy shop. And that will be amazing. And I would absolutely love it. Um, it's going to have like Skype consultations attached to it so we can discuss how each week has gone. And I really think that might be a way, alongside all of the free information that I'm trying to pump out onto YouTube, a way for people who want more and who want to explore deeper uh, to have the chance to do that with me and to have the chance to kind of benefit from the stuff that I put out there in a really, in a more serious way. So I know that writing a course is no mean feat and I know that teaching a course is no mean feat and I totally get that. And just from working out the skeleton of my course and where it's going to go and what it's going to be about, I know that it's not something that you're just going to give away for free and I completely appreciate that. But 
some of these prices I've seen for spiritual mentoring are like pretty sky high and I've got a lot of other stuff I want to think about and do. So the more reputable you maybe want to go with your spiritual mentor, then also the more out of pocket you're going to be and you have to consider that. And the last thing that I wrote was 100% belief that it was necessary. And this I think is important. I am holding out on attempting to find a spiritual mentor for any length of time because I want to get that inner innate feeling, that gut instinct, that intuition that it is definitely the correct way forward. I don't want to have any kind of wishy-washy, airy-fairy, maybe I should get a spiritual mentor. I mean, that's something I've never done. Maybe I'm stagnating. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe. No, I want that instant feeling, that fiery, red-blooded feeling of I'm going to find a spiritual mentor. I'm going to find someone to push me to that next plateau. And I haven't really felt that yet. Um, and I guess I'm waiting for the moment when I do, because I think, you know, for the money that you spend and for the time that you invest and for the relationship that you're embarking on and the commitment that you're putting forth into that, it needs to come from a real place and it needs to be something that you're sure you want to do before you actually jump ship. So that's probably the main reason that I'm holding out. But I am a lot more open to the idea of having a spiritual mentor than I ever have been in the past. And it is something that I am now considering on a quite a significant level. And if anybody has any experiences with spiritual mentors that they want to tell me about in the comments section, or message me then I would be really interested to hear about it and I'm probably going to blog a little bit about this as well at some point because it is just something that's really on my mind at the moment so thank you very much for listening dandelions and have a really lovely evening or I mean I always kind of let you guys know when I'm filming this but you could be watching it any time so have a nice day at work have a nice morning have a nice weekend whenever you're watching it <laughs> if you're watching it five years from now then hello to the you you were five years ago <laughs> and that as they say is that